Yes, guys, problem number 23. P Limited is considering the acquisition of R Limited and the financial data at the time of acquisition being as follows. Net profit after tax, number of shares, your earnings per share. That is nothing but net profit after tax divided by number of shares. 60 divided by 12 is 5. 12 divided by 5 is 2.4. Market price per share is 150 and 48. Market price is given. Earnings per share is given. P ratio is MPS by EPS. 150 by 5, 30. 48 by 2.4, 20. This is information given to you. It is expected that the net profit after tax of the two companies who would continue to be would continue to be 70 lakhs, 72 lakhs even after amalgamation. How did he get 72? 60 plus 12. 60 and 12 is before amalgamation. So after amalgamation also he'll get 72 only. Explain the effect on EPS of the merged company under each of the following assumptions. So after the merger, he is talking about it. What is the effect on EPS? P is acquiring R. So what is a merged company? The merged company is R. The merging company is P. So let's talk about it. If P offers to pay 60, share, 60 per share to the shareholders of R, P offers to pay 78 per share to the shareholders of R. The amount in both the cases is to be paid in the form of shares of P. Then he is asking you what is the impact of EPS, effect on EPS. So let's start. Computation of PC. I have two situations, situation number one and situation number two. In the first situation, he is offering 60 rupees per share and seven, second, share, second situation, 78 rupees per share. Price per share in P, 60 in first case, 78 in second case. What are the number of shares in P? P limited number of shares are 12, oh, I'm sorry. P offers to pay 60 rupees, number of P share, price per share in R guys this is. P offers to pay 60 rupees per share to the shareholders of R and 78 rupees per share to the shareholders of R. So this is price per share in R. So number of shares in R, R has 5 shares. Everything is rupees in lakhs. So purchase consideration is first case 300, second case 390. All rupees in lakhs. Next. What is the last statement of the question saying? The amount in both the cases is paid in the form of shares in P. So this is the purchase consideration which will be paid in the form of shares of P limited. So what is the issue price per share? Issue price per share in P limited, P limited should be offering at its market price. Market price of P is 150. So what is the number of shares to be shown? Number of shares to be issued by P limited would be 300 divided by 150, 2 lakh shares. 390 divided by 150, this is 2.6 I guess. These are the number of shares to be issued by P limited. Now, he is saying that after the merger also, my profits after tax will be 72. So, he is asking you what will be the impact of EPS. If 2 shares and 2.6 shares are issued, what are the number of shares in P after merger? Number of shares in P limited 
after merger. What was there before merger? Before merger, number of shares in P is 12. If 2 is issued, then it will become 14. 2.6 is issued, then it will become 14.6. Profits after tax, for after merger, he said there will not be any increase, it is just an addition of both, they get 72 lakhs profit. What is the impact on EPS? Then the EPS per share after merger. Post merger profits after tax divided by number of shares 72 divided by 14. This is 5.15. 72 divided by 14.6. 4.93. He is asking you the effect on EPS. What was the EPS before merger? P limited EPS before merger is 5. So my effect on EPS here it is positive 0.15 negative 0 0.07. That is what he asked. And let's go for the 24th. An elaborate question, guys. Read carefully. The following is a summarized balance sheet as on 31st December of Sun Limited. 80,000 equity shares of 10 rupees each fully paid up. So I have one class of shares which are 10 rupees fully paid up. Second class 10 rupees share 8 paid up. Third class 5 rupees fully paid up. And fourth class 5 rupees share 4 rupees paid up. Different class of shares. I have preference shares of 10% 3 lakhs. That's the general reserve. There's a PNL, other liabilities. Turn. Check additional information. In 2009, a machinery costing 50,000 was purchased, but it was wrongly charged to revenue. No rectification has yet been made for the same. So, we have to increase the profits of 2009 and also give an effect for depreciation on such machinery thereafter. Stock is overvalued by 10,000 in 2010. Debtors are to be reduced by 5,000 in 2011. Some old furniture having a book value of 10,000 was disposed for 6,000. That is also in 2011 only because there is no specific year given there. Fixed assets are worth 5% more than the actual book value and the depreciation on the appreciated value of fixed assets except missionary is not to be considered in valuation of goodwill. Of the investments, 20% are trade investments and the balance are non-trade. All the trade investments are valued at 20% below cost and the trade investments were purchased on 1st Jan 2011. 50% of those non-trade investments were purchased on 1st Jan 2010 and the balance purchased on 1st Jan 2009 itself. A uniform rate of dividend at the rate of 10% is earned on all investments. An expected increase in the expenditure without commensurate increase in the selling price is 20,000. So expenses will increase, selling price will not. So what happens to profit? Profit falls. 20,000. That is future profit. Research and development expenditure is anticipated in the future at 30,000 per annum. That is also future expenditure. In the similar business, normal rate of return on capital employed is 10%. My profits after tax in 2009, 10, 11 are as follows. Guys, the current year that he is talking about is 2011 itself. He has given you the current year profit after tax. Next he says, the current year income tax is 50%. I 
However, the effective income tax rate will be 40 only. From the above, ascertain the ex-dividend and come-dividend intrinsic values for different classes of equity shares. For this purpose, goodwill can be taken as 3 years purchase of super profits and depreciation to be charged on the machinery at the rate of 10% on reducing balance method. Guys, right? what is come dividend value per share? Come dividend value per share is nothing but including the dividend per share. So I can say that this is X dividend value per share plus your dividend per share. This is the formula I can use. So in basic common sense if you apply, if I either identify come dividend value or ex-dividend value that is sufficient. If I identify ex-dividend value, then I'll say come dividend is equal to ex-dividend plus DPS. If I identify come dividend value, I'll just say ex-dividend value is equal to come dividend value minus dividend per share. So if either of them I calculate, the other one is simple for me. So let's start. First thing he is talking about is valuation of goodwill. So we need to value goodwill as per super profits method. To get super profits, first we need to start with FMP. To get FMP, first we will do corrected profits. Then we have to strike an average and then give future adjustments. So please observe very carefully. What are the current year adjustments you need to observe and then we have to give the adjustments. Correction to current year profits should be taken up separately. Corrections for computation of FMP should be considered separately. You can't combine both. I need corrected profits of current year to identify average capital employee. I'll use this formula later, not now. So let's start. I have three years given to me, 2009, 2010 and 2011. I'm starting with computation of corrected profits. So let's start. First, put an heading FMP. We are calculating FMP actually. Start with profits after tax given to you. This is given to me as 2,10,000 in 2009, 1,90,000 in 2010 and 2 lakhs in 2011. Since there is a change in tax rate, normally what we do is we always give adjustments with profit before tax only. So make it PBT. How do we get PBT? Current tax rate is 50%. That means all the profits that you calculated is after charging a tax rate of 50 percent. If 100 rupees was PBT, 50 rupees was tax and PAT was 50. So if this is 50, what is 100? Double. So PBT is 4 lakhs 20, 3 lakh 80 and 4 lakhs. This is my PBT. There is nothing but into, 50, into 100 divided by 50. 2 lakh 10 into 100 by 50. So I'll give the correction, corrected profits. Adjustments for corrected profits. Go on. First adjustment. Go point wise, first one, machinery. Machinery wrongly charged. Which year wrongly charged to PNL? 2009. So I'll add back 50,000 rupees of profit. From thereafter, I need to take depreciation impact. Depreciation at the rate of 10% WDV. Last line, depreciation on machinery is 10% on reducing balance. First year, 5000. Second year, 4500. Last year, 4050. 
keep deducting 10%, 10%. 5,000 minus 10%, 4,500 minus 10%, 4,050. Second adjustment. Read the second point. Second point is regarding stock. Whenever I have stock adjustment, I need to split it between closing stock and opening stock. Chala. Stock is overvalued by, by 10,000 in 2010. That means I have to reduce the closing stock. When I reduce the value of closing stock, automatically my profits also get reduced. It's only for the year 2010. But understand this stock, which was a closing stock in 2010, will become opening stock of 2011. If I reduce the opening stock, what happens to the profit? Ulta impact, that is an inverse relationship. Profit should increase by 10,000 in 2011. Exactly reverse impact. So reduction in the closing stock in 2010 will reduce the profits. A reduction in the opening stock of 2011 will increase the profits. Next adjustment. Debtors in 2011 should be reduced by 5,000. Debtors, reduce it by 5,000. That's nothing but a bad debt. Will reduce your profits as well. Still a correction to current year profits only. Then, some old furniture having a book value of 10,000 was disposed of for 6,000. Why did this item be given to you? Because it is a non-recurring item. Abnormal loss of 4,000. Abnormal loss is not an adjustment to correction of profits. It is an adjustment to be done for FMP. So, park it aside. This adjustment, I'll consider it, but not now. Next. Fixed assets are worth 5% more than the book value and depreciation on the appreciated value of the fixed assets, except missionary, is not to be considered. So, appreciation of fixed asset, depreciation impact of appreciation, all these are adjustments in FMP, have nothing to do here. Next. Interest on non-trade investments, again FMP adjustments. Expected increase. Increase in the expenditure, research and development expenditure of future. All these are future adjustments. That's it. This is your corrected PBD. This is my corrected PBT. Correction to current year profits have been done. From the PBT, give these adjustments. The first one will be 4,65,000. Next one should be 3 lakhs 65,500. And the last one is 400950. This is what I need. Why did I calculate all this? Why corrected profits and FMP separately? Because I need this part. This part is current year profit. Current year profit will use it in finding out what is the average capital employed. We find out closing capital employee minus half of current year profits. Guys, this is PBT. Okay. You can't take half of this. We need to take half of profits after tax. 50% tax rate is there. Uska half. So basically one fourth of this value. Anyways, that is later on. So now give me FMP adjustments. Adjustments for FMP. Future adjustments leave it. Past adjustments you give. Adjustments to past year profits. Come on. First one is, yep, read the point number B. Abnormal loss on furniture. Loss on sale of furniture. Which year? 2011. Loss is 4,011. It is a loss. I'll add. Because when it was a loss, I already deducted. Now you add it back. Because I want uniform profits. Next one. Non-trade investment income. Income on 
non trade investments read that point carefully you can identify now come on point number d of the investments 20% are trade balance are non trade flip the question check investments investments is 3 lakhs 20% trade 60000 non trade is 240 out of the 240 read trade investments or purchase on first jan i'm least bother about it i'm only talking about non trade 50% of non trade investments were acquired on first jan 2010 and the rest were acquired on first jan 2009 that means 50% was existing on 2009 remaining 50% came up in 2010 now how much return are they giving a uniform dividend rate of 10% what was the total non trade investments 80% of 3 lakhs 2 lakh 40 out of 2 lakh 40 what did you purchase in 2009 half half of 2 lakh 40 is 1 lakh 20 1 lakh 20 is giving you a return of 10% so my income on non trade investment is 12000 in the year 2009 come to 2010 50% already acquired in 2009 remaining 50 i acquired now so 120 already existing plus 120 purchase now total 240 so my return should be 10% of that 24000 it was existing even in the balance sheet at the end So twenty-four thousand is an adjustment even from two thousand eleven. Balance all or other all adjustments are future year adjustments, not for the past years. And close it here and strike an average there. Four lakh fifty-three thousand minus twenty-four three lakhs forty-one five hundred and three lakh. Eighty thousand nine fifty. Take a simple average. average take a simple average average profits on simple average add everything divided by 3 Your average profits are three ninety one eight one seven. Now I need to get FMP. You need to continue calculating. Average profits. Average of past profits is three lakhs ninety one thousand eight one seven. But I'm talking about future, so there should be some future adjustments. Check the future adjustments. Turn to point number E. An increase in expenditure without commensurate increase in selling price is twenty thousand. Increase in expenditure without increase in selling price. So this will reduce my profits by twenty thousand. Next, one more future adjustment. research and development expenditure research and development expenses 30000 one more future adjustment yes there's one more read point number c fixed assets are worth 5% more than the actual book value 
and the depreciated depreciation on the appreciated value of fixed assets except missionary is not to be considered for valuation of goodwill that means missionary should be considered no other assets depreciation depreciation directly you know that it is given as 10% and the impact is the increase is 5% what is the missionary already existing in the balance sheet 8 lakhs plus this missionary 8 lakhs plus this missionary total missionary increased by 5% depreciation impact of 10% depreciation on increase in plant and missionary or upward revaluation of plant and missionary already existing in the balance sheet 8 lakhs plus what is the value of this 50,000 minus 5,000 minus 4,500 minus 4050 is 36,450 I guess revalued by 5% upward depreciation impact of 10% on the upward revaluation that's it much and ignore the decimals guys no problem FMP pre-tax this is all before tax only before tax FMP is 3 lakhs 37,000 634.75 less tax future effective tax rate is given at the rate of 40% deduct the tax the balance of the profits we can call it as FMP post tax this is what we use for the computation of goodwill. I just eliminated the decimals, so this should be 202580. This is my FMP. Ignore the decimals, it should be 202580, that is the FMP. So we split the track calculation to get first corrected current year profits, then adjustment to FMP in the past years and then FMP adjustment in the future years so three parts and finally I got FMP post tax now once you get FMP post tax there is the first determinant of goodwill the second determinant of goodwill should be your capital employed to get average capital employed always start with terminal deduct half of current year profits will get the answer Calculation of average capital employed to get average capital employed, start with your assets first. Goodwill valuation, don't consider goodwill. First asset that I will be considering is plant and machinery. Your plant and machinery already existing 8 lakhs plus 
36,450 addition to plant and machinery. Everything should be valued at 105%. 5% increase in the value of fixed assets. Then comes your land and building. Increased by 5%. 10,50,000. Next, furniture and fixtures. Increased by 5%. 1,5,000. Vehicles increased by 5%, 2 lakhs 10,000. I'll only consider trade investments. Non trade investments not to be added in computation of capital employed for the purpose of goodwill valuation. Read point number D. Investments are 20% trade. And the trade investments are valued 20% below cost. Total investments 3 lakhs. Then out of that 20% is trade. That means 3 lakhs into 20% is 60,000. That 60,000 is 20% lower. So it should be like this 20% of 3 lakhs 60,000. 60,000 minus 20%. So I am valuing it at 80% only. So I get 48,000 rupees of non trade invest sorry trade investments next one stock Stock should be reduced by 10,000, yes or no? Absolutely no. Why? Because, understand, when is the stock adjustment? Stock adjustment is in 2010. I never said that the stock is overvalued in 2011. 11 stock as it is, you can take. Detars, yes. Current year, there is an adjustment to Detars. Reduced by 5,000. 1,90,000. This 5,000 is in 2011 only. Next, prepaid expenses. Prepaid expenses are current assets. They are not fictitious assets. 40,000. Advances. Forty-five thousand cash in bank two lakhs. What is total assets? Reduce outside liabilities. I'll go in the reverse manner. Proposed dividend is not an outside liability. I'll start with provision for tax. Two lakhs. Outstanding expenses. Twenty thousand. Creditors one lakh fifty bank loan fifty thousand deposits one lakh. Fifteen percent term loan one lakh fifty thousand final debentures twelve percent debentures two lakhs.
that's it for your outside liabilities this is total of outside liabilities many things are all share capital and reserves will not be considered what is, the, what is the value of plant and machinery guys Eight seven eight two seven two for machinery and the liabilities total is and the. The set total is twenty-seven lakh That's it, we get closing capital employee. Terminal capital employed is twenty one lakh six thousand two seventy two. If you have to get average capital employed, then we have to reduce half of current year profits after tax. Your corrected current year profits before tax is four lakh nine fifty. Tax rate of the current year was fifty percent of that half. Half of half, that means you have to take one fourth. One fourth of your corrected current year profits. My average capital employed. Show the calculations, guys, clearly. It is 21 lakh 6272 minus half of 50% of. Four lakhs nine fifty. This is profit after tax. Half of that reduce it. So half of that should be one lakh some change. So your average profit is twenty lakhs five thousand. Six thousand Your average capital employed is twenty lakh six thousand. Zero three five, reducing half of current year profits. Now I know the determinants. FMP I know, I know capital employed, NRR he gave. Check the question somewhere. NRR value is given. Yep, NRR is given in point number G. Ten percent sufficient enough. You can get the goodwill. Computation of goodwill. Super profits method.
कंपेयर एफ एम पी टू जीरो टू फाइव एट जीरो विद नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट नॉर्मल प्रॉफिट इज टेन परसेंट ऑफ कैपिटल एम्प्लॉय टू डबल जीरो सिक्स जीरो थ्री फाइव दिस विल बी टू डबल जीरो सिक्स जीरो फोर थ्री पॉइंट फाइव यू गेट डेस्ट फोर दैट विल गिव यू माई सुपर प्रॉफिट सुपर प्रॉफिट इज वन थाउजेंड वन थाउजेंड नाइन एट्टी नाइन सेवेंटी सिक्स वन नाइन सेवन सिक्स super profits and finally goodwill 3 years purchase of super profits that is given to us goodwill can be considered as 3 years purchase of super profits multiply this by 3 it should be 5928 that is the value of goodwill i got we did not calculate the problem guys the problem is valuation of share we only calculated value of goodwill now comes the value of share but valuation of share becomes easy because you have closing capital employed so there are three adjustments to closing capital employed to get profits available to equity shareholders first one is non trade investment second one is the goodwill value and the third one is preference share capital and their preference dividend if these three things are deducted or added ultimately we get what is net assets available to equity shareholder from there the problem becomes much simpler now here comes we have to make an assumption because we have partly paid shares as well we will make two assumptions assumption number 1 assuming that the calls will be made in near future and assumption number 2 where calls are not supposed to be made in near future i'm not writing the assumptions again we have already seen those assumptions so valuation of shares assumption number 1 assumption number 2 fill up the figures first one i will start with capital employed or closing capital employed as per goodwill computation you can pick up terminal capital employed is 2106272 2106272 add goodwill add your non trade investments deduct your preference share capital along with their preference dividend as well unpaid preference dividend is there in the balance sheet you have to deduct this figure and i'll add calls on shares in adjustment in assumption number 1 that will close add the figures first goodwill we just calculated it as 5928 trade investments is there any valuation change for trade investments nothing only sorry non trade investments there's no change trade investments we already value 20% less non trade investments are 80% of 3 lakhs 2 lakh 40 preference share capital is 3 lakhs to be reduced
Preference dividend also be to reduce 30,000. It is obviously 10% preference share capital. So current year preference dividend is 10% 30,000. Calls and shares only in assumption number 1. Wherever you have partly paid shares, keep calling. First case, 10 rupees share, 8 paid up. Calls and shares is 2 rupees. 50,000 shares, 1 lakh. On second partly paid share, 30,000 shares, 5 rupees share, 4 rupees paid up, 1 rupee unpaid, 30,000. So 1 lakh plus 30,000, the total calls and shares is 1 lakh 30,000. There is nothing but 50,000 shares into 2 rupees, there are 8 rupees paid up, plus 30,000 shares into 1 rupee, there are 4 paid up, 5 rupees share. Figures on? This is 20 lakhs, 22,200. This is called as net assets attributable to equity shareholders. Now, when you find out the value per share, what is the value that I get? X dividend or come dividend will be the question. Because he asked you to find out both X as well as come dividend value. Understand, there is a proposed dividend which is given there. 1,50,000 on the liability side. Did I deduct? No. That means, the net assets is including the value of dividends. So, whenever I am including the value of dividend, the valuation which I get is come dividend value. Once I get come dividend value, I'll divide, I'll divide, sorry, deduct it by the dividend per share, you get X dividend value. So right now what we get from this particular thing is X dividend value, sorry, come dividend value. If you want X dividend value, you deduct one more liability that is proposed dividend for equity shares. Then you will directly get X dividend to get come dividend at DPS, dividend per share. Right now what we get is come dividend because I did not deduct the amount of proposed dividend. Check the number of equity shares carefully. In the first case, where I took calls and shares, 80,000 plus 50,000, 1,30,000. Plus 36 plus 30,000, this I'll have to take proportionate valuation because they have different face values. So how much will it be if I write number of shares of rupees 10 each? In the first case, then I'll record it this way. 80,000 shares plus 50,000 shares plus 36,000 plus 30,000 divided by 2. 000. If it is in the second case where calls and shares is not made, total paid up value 8 lakhs plus 4 lakhs, 12. 12 plus 1 lakh 80 plus 3, 1 lakh 20, the total is 15 lakhs. Total paid up share capital on equity shares divided by 10. This is 66 divided by 2, 33. 33 plus 1 lakh 30, 1 lakh 63. This is 1 lakh 50. that you get come dividend value per share of rupees 10 fully paid up. divided f by g and you'll get the answer
That is 13.2 and 13.48. Come on. Come dividend value per share of 10 rupees fully paid up you got. Find out. Rupees 10, 8 paid up. In the first case, I will have to divide, deduct it by 2, minus 2, 11.2. Second case, I have to calculate 13.48 into 8 by 10. 10.79. Senator. Then, rupees 5 fully paid up. Take proportionate valuation. In both cases, 13.2 into 5 by 10 and 13.48 into 5 by 10. First case is 7, 6.6, 6.72. Rupee 5, 4 paid up. 1 rupee deduct. 6.6 minus 1, answer is 5.6. Second case, 13.48 into 4 by 10. Value? 5.39. 5.39. All these are come dividend values. But what do I also need? X dividend values. How do you get X dividend value? You just have to deduct the dividend per shares. Dividend is always paid on paid up value. So paid up value minus dividend. First of all, find out what is the dividend per share percentage. What is the percentage of dividend? Your proposed dividend in the balance sheet is being shown at 1,50,000. Your total paid up share capital is 15 lakhs. 15 lakhs, 1,50,000 is basically 10%. So when you have to calculate X dividend value, X dividend value per share. Talking about both the assumptions, assumption number 1 and 2. Fill up again. Rupees 10 fully paid up. Rupee 10, 8 paid up. Rupees 5 fully paid up. Rupees 5, 4 paid up. Simply do one same simple thing. Come dividend value per share. Minus dividend per share. First, first let me place these values. 13.2, 13.48, 11.2. Ten point seven eight, six point six, five point six, six point seven two, five point three nine. Dividend at the rate of ten percent on ten rupee share ten percent one rupee twelve point two minus one rupee twelve point four eight. Eight rupees paid up eighty paise. Eighty say this should be 10.4 and 9.98. 5 rupees share, 50 paise. 6.1, 6.22. 4 rupees share, 40 paise dividend. 5.2 and 4.49. Sorry, yeah, 4.99. 4.99. These are X dividend values.